Hello everyone, welcome back. In this lecture video, I will be discussing about the determination of endpoint energy of beta particles by half thickness measurement. This is the aim of the experiment is to determine the endpoint energy of the beta rays emitted from a radioactive source by half thickness method. These are the operators required. We require a GM counting system, GM detector stand, radioactive source kit, at least two beta sources. In this experiment, we use two beta sources that is thallium 204 and strontium 90 and we require aluminum absorber sets. We know this is beta decay. There is a parent nucleus XA which is radioactive, which is beta active. This emits a beta particle E minus 1 0 that represents to beta particle. Then we get a daughter nucleus. This daughter nucleus, the mass number remains same whereas the charge number increases by 1 unit. And uh, this process generally associated with huge liberation of energy. That amount of energy liberated is also called as Q value of the reaction and it is represented by Q. This is actually referred to beta minus decay which takes place in natural radioactivity. We have beta plus decay also. There actually uh, that takes place in artificial radioactivity. Then the parent nucleus will emit a positron instead of electron. But in natural radioactivity, we get beta minus particle that is electron. We know this beta decay is because of the conversion of neutron to a proton inside the nucleus. And this proton which is converted from this neutron or which is obtained from this neutron remains inside the nucleus and this electron will come out. And this electron will come out with another particle with the emission of another particle that is referred to as anti neutrino. This energy, total energy released in the process is taken out by these two particles. In fact, it is shared between these two particles. If beta particle carries more energy, then neutrino, anti neutrino carries less energy and vice versa. The total energy is shared between these two particles. The maximum energy carried by the beta particle in this process is referred to as endpoint energy. We call it as endpoint energy and we will see how to determine this endpoint energy by using two different beta sources out of which one is standard. That means in one source we assume that the endpoint energy or uh, endpoint energy is known. We take a source for which endpoint energy is known and we determine the endpoint energy of the beta particle in the other source. This is the range energy relationship for low energy beta particles. If R or not, R refers to the range of beta particles, then the range energy relationship uh, for beta particles of lesser energy is given through this relation R is equal to 530 E naught minus 106 where this E is in MeV and this range is in Mg per centimeter square. The off thickness of the absorber that is the material absorber required to reduce the counts to half of its initial value that is called as off thickness. This half thickness is related to range uh, through this relation R is equal to some constant times T R. And if you use two radioactive sources and the same absorber, if the material absorber is same, then this constant of proportionality can be eliminated by taking the ratios. That is T of 1 by T of 2 will be equal to R1 by R2. This is the relation that we use. So we determine uh, of thickness of two sources, two radioactive sources and one source will be a standard source by which you can cal calculate a range. The other one for the unknown one we can calculate the energy through these relations. And this is the procedure that we follow. 
what you have to do is we have to make standard connections and arrangements between GM counting system, detector, absorber and the source. We have to set operating voltage GM of the GM tube. Generally, uh, for that depends on the GM detector tube. It, it is different for different tubes. Uh, and you have to measure the background counts four times for about 180 seconds, say. And you have to take the average background count. The description of the measuring the background count and also uh, setting this operating voltage for the DM tube is given in the description that I had already discussed in my previous video lecture. One can follow that to set the operating voltage as well as to count the background counts. After all these initial adjustments, you have to place a beta source a standard one that means for which the endpoint energy of the beta particles is known. Here we use thallium source and we place it in the source stand at about 3 centimeter from the end window of the GM tube. And we place absorber, aluminum absorbers one by one uh, of different thickness and we record the counts. Again, to how to record these counts is given in the description link. Please go through that. Then you will understand how to record the counts using GM counter. This is nucleonics make GM counting system. This is the front panel. Generally what you have to do is before switching on this, you have to turn this in the counterclockwise direction and ensure that the voltage is zero. Then turn on this, you get the display, apply the voltage and the voltage should be set to the operating voltage. And for this counting system it is 430 volts, you can set it for 430 volts. Then press the program button, set the preset time. Here you have to set it for 3 minutes that is for 180 seconds. Then you store it and whenever you want to count the counts, you have to press this start button. Then you can after one 180 seconds, uh, you can notice the count here. And uh, before placing the source, you record the background counts twice and after removal of the source, again you measure the background counts twice and take the average. So that average gives you the background counts. After that, this is uh, the end window. So you can see this, this is the GM tube and this is the source holder. This is where you can place the source. This is the source holder and this is where you can keep the absorber set. Aluminum absorber can be placed here and this is the source holder. So this is where you can place the source and see that the distance between the source holder and the end window is about 5 centimeter. So that the distance between the end window and the absorber, it will be around 2 to 3 centimeters, somewhere in between. In between we keep the absorber. To start with, we measure the counts without any absorber. That means we place the source here and we switch on this. We start the start button. Now it will measure the counts from the source since there is no absorber in between, it will give you the maximum count and that is actually referred to as N0. Now after that, you will be given an absorber set, you place different absorber sets here, place aluminum absorbers one by one and you record the counts for 180 seconds here and you will see that the count rate keeps decreasing. This is about the absorber set that comes uh, from nucleonics, you can notice that the thickness is given here, it is given in millimeter, if you want to you can convert it into centimeter. That set is there here and each aluminum thickness increases by 0 0.05 millimeter, you can notice. Now you repeat this and you record 
the reading for strontium. That means place the strontium source in the source holder and just place the absorber side one after the other and record the counts. The true counts will be equal to N0 minus NB, N observed, observed value minus NB that gives you true counts and estimate N0 by 2 uh, from the graph. And you, once if you know the endpoint energy of beta particles from thallium, one can calculate the range from the equation that we mentioned and using that range formula, you can calculate the range of beta particles in strontium and using that range formula, you can calculate the endpoint energy as mentioned before. This is, this is about the observation and calculation. As I said, thallium is, for, for thallium the endpoint energy is known, it is about 0.764 MeV. You record the background counts, in fact you have to do it in at least 4 trials, 3-4 trials, take average and you place thallium source in the source holder, note down the activity as on the date you perform the experiment, increase just place the absorber one after the other. First it is done without absorber and you observe the counts, then you measure the true counts, true counts will be equal to observed counts minus background counts. Finally find out the count rate, that means divide it by 180 seconds and place another absorber, next absorber and so on. You use all the absorber, you will see that the count rate decreases. And if you plot this counts as a function of absorber thickness, you will see that the counts decreases exponentially like this and you have to carry out this experiment so that the counts sufficiently decreases half of the initial value and you just uh, by knowing the counts with no absorber, you calculate N0 by 2, say with no absorber you can call it as N0, find out N0 by 2 and you locate this N0 by 2, draw a straight line, it will meet this curve somewhere, from there you draw perpendicular, that gives you half thickness. Then again use strontium and repeat the same procedure. For strontium also you plot count as a function of absorber thickness and you determine half thickness. Once if you know half thickness for both the sources, then you can use this formula which I mentioned here. So you know half thickness for both the absorbers and you know the energy for thallium. Therefore you can calculate range, you call it as R1, then you can calculate R2 through this relation. T of 1 is known, T of 2 is known and range is known. So you can calculate R2 and you substitute R2 back in this equation, then you can calculate energy of uh, beta particles in thallium using this formula. That is how you can perform this experiment. Thank you. Thank you very much.